listening to the Mothership Connection, your cosmic link to the other side. Do not attempt to adjust your computer. There is nothing wrong. We have taken control as to bring you this special show. The Mothership flies through cyberspace one more time. My name is Dobie Maxwell, the king of Uranus, flying through space. And to my left, to your right, Carrie Turner, the millennial falcon, who's putting all the things together behind the work that I am an old fart and I don't know how to do. <laughs> Over good. here, the uh, super geek, and I mean that with the most uh, most respect, Mr. Greg DeGuire. Thank you. For the <laughs> first time ever, we are adding alcohol to the mix mm. as we're flying the mothership. Dilly dilly. <laughs> Normally it flies on uh, cosmic fuel, now we do cats. <laughs> Vodka and grape soda. A little extra cake tonight. Yes. Exactly. Yes. We are in the ghetto of the galaxy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so we're gas. And I'm right here. Here's Al, our lesser terrestrial pal. And then we also have, I, I want to kick off and say, I found a book okay, called UFO Encounters. Your phone is ringing upstairs. That's okay. Okay. You never know who it could be. <laughs> It, it could be. It's uh, gonna be the big one. Benny and Barney <laughs> Hill calling. They want, to, they want their Yeah, yeah. This is a book I found for twenty-five cents. It's called UFO Encounters. To me, I have found the older books. I believe this is printed in England. I'm not exactly sure where, but it's got all the, the from uh, Roswell on. Hey, that's uh, J. Allen Hynek. J. Allen Hynek, right? Exactly oh. here, and it's very. It's packed with detail, and it's really, really good, especially for a quarter. If you are watching oh. the Mothership Connection and you have a book like this, an obscure book, can you can you send it to us? We'll buy it from you. I'm not looking to rip anybody off. I'm not going to put this on eBay or anything. But we just want to add a cosmic library. And uh, if you see us at events, we'll bring them along if somebody wants to borrow one. That's okay, too. But I thought, you know, for a quarter, if it says UFO encounters, even if somebody made it up, I was going to buy it anyway. Yeah. But I thought it was just a chock full, so I'm going to make it a donation to the show. Anybody that wants to take it cool. home, read it, do whatever you want to do, and uh, we'll get the... Uh, the library started. We, we actually have one here, Skeptic Magazine. We have this here, right here. So anytime you see something, whether it's in a flea market or a thrift store, yeah, this is gonna say, I'm sure you found soda. like treasures in your fleet market finds. Yeah, I just found a Willie Mays baseball actually for <laughs> one dollar. <laughs> Signed official league ball, wow. Willie Mays. It was two balls, one ninety nine, and one of them was a uh, a Willie Mays baseball. Right. Shavings of Babe Ruth's bat. Exactly. <laughs> Mickey Mantle's liver in a pickle Pieces of the True Cross. Really, exactly. I like it. Yeah, direct Declaration of Independence. Yeah, I like it. Right. The original one. Yeah, exactly. You're giving away too much. The FBI wants to get a hold of you. The FBI wants to get a hold of you. We're at the compound. We can't tell you where the compound is. No. It's so secret that we'll have to kill you if we do tell you. But we, we, we'll tell you this. We are in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and we are opening... Uh, I have a business. I've had a stand-up comedian for years, the Kenosha Comedy Club. It's in the Wyndham Hotel in downtown Kenosha. The room is being built out. We will be able to use it five nights a week. Friday and Saturday we do stand-up comedy shows. The rest of the nights are open if we wanted to tape a show, record a show. You can come down and people can meet us and we can have a live that's cool. You know, kind of interaction, fun That's thing. ambitious. It'll be fun. It'll be a, It'll be a lot, lot of, fun. of fun. This thing is all about fun. So yeah. Okay. Now, you got something. Uh, you did some DNA testing. Mm. So, I did the 23andMe. Adam, can you run upstairs and, and grab the phone? Just answer. <laughs> I think it is the FBI. Yeah. So, <laughs> Don't tell them the I did the, uh, the, the 23andMe test that we did a show about not that long yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. And I was actually going to do the test on the air. But it takes an aggressive amount of spittle. <laughs> to fill the little specimen jar, and I thought that'd be too gross to film. So, eh. all right. So, and it is was it as big as your cocktail. Uh, no, <laughs> no. It, I mean, it's about. I'm looking at an ink pen. It's about that much spittle on an ink pen. I mean, it's, it's a, significant. It's, it's significant because you can't eat or drink anything like a half hour beforehand. Mm -hmm. And I had dry mouth because Water. It's, it's dry. And nothing. <laughs> really? Not a zip zero. Nothing a half hour before you, you should have just thought of like spittle. sour foods or something. And then no, no. Yeah. I wanted to make this as clean a test as possible. So before all that, I have to go on the 23andMe website. And you have to uh, enter the kit's numbers to officially designate it so they know when they get it that you're registered, all this kind of stuff. But they also have questionnaires. Now, typically, I don't like to give the government much of anything, but this time around, uh, this time around, I answered every question. And I mean almost every single question. Some of the questions are repetitive and I thought nonsensical, so I didn't answer maybe about 25% of the questions, but I answered about 75% of the questions. And according to the website, that's about, what did I say, 70% of the people that answer these questions, I answered 70% more than the people who have answered these questions. I mean, I answered a lot of questions. Could you give us an example of what the question would be? Well, <laughs> a lot of the questions wanted to know my ethnicity. But a specific ethnicity is what they were really looking for. Every question has a follow-up question. So if you say, oh, were you susceptible to this? If you answer yes or no, then they say, are you Jewish? 
Yes or no. Okay, no. Mm. Three questions later. So you were susceptible to this. Are you Jewish? They really asked a lot of questions if I was Jewish or not. So that being said, all right, some of the other questions were uh, if I had heart disease or if I had arthritis. And I had to click yes for that because of my hip situation. And then they wanted to know uh, if I had uh, kidney stones. And so, of course, yes to that one. So it was Are a they lot of Jewish kidney stones. <laughs> yes. Are they after, kosher kidney stones? <laughs> so that's the thing. After you answer these questions, they keep and they keep and keep and keep and keep asking, "Are you Jewish?" I mean, I get that they want to know, but isn't my spittle going to answer that for them? Right. So, hmm. prior to taking the test, one of our previous guests, Anita Meyer, author Anita Meyer. So we play trivia occasionally at bars here in town, mm -hmm. and I was playing trivia with her about a week ago, week and a half. Anyways, uh, and I told her about the 23andMe test, and I told her that it's a, uh, it's a Christian-based company, and I couldn't figure out what a Christian-based company is doing gathering all this information. Maybe this branched out. Maybe this is just one of their sub-companies that they're making money on to fund whatever other interest they have. But she asked me, she goes, well, you don't know what they're looking for? And I said... No. She said, well, I know exactly what they're looking for. Said, Please enlighten me. She says they're looking for the holy bloodline. They want to know if you're related to Jesus. So the theory is, here comes the theory. <laughs> the theory is that Jesus did not die on the cross. He survived. Uh, he survived long enough to battle at the hilltop of Masada. That's where a lot of people will say that he actually died defending his people. But before he made it to Masada, Masada is a very famous hilltop that the Romans and Jews had one of the very last stands, the very last battles, and the Jews, I'm sorry, lost. The Romans won and the Jews got wiped out. But that was the last I had stand. money on the Jews. I too. had money on the Jews too. Who did? Thing. It's like you always bet on the Globetrotters one time, I bet on the Generals, and I ate it. So what can you do? <laughs> Anyways, so Jesus sends his wife, Mary Magdalene, and their child, and I want to say the child's name was Sarah. I could be wrong on that, but that's the only name that pops in my head. Anyways, they escape via boat, canoe, rubber raft, floating pile, plastic bottles, whatever, to the south of France. They integrate into the society of south of France. How long have you been drinking that cocktail? <laughs> Three sips. You're going maybe four a little sip. off from I know, I know, but he, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, okay. I'm trying All to right. bottle the answer. All right. Okay. So they get into France, where the child marries into the line of Merovingian kings. Uh, the more famous Merovingian king is Charlemagne. Now, Charlemagne's important because North Carolina and South Carolina, the word Carolina, is a derivative of Charlemagne. So it's theorized that the holy blood of Jesus was sent to the new land, a.k.a. North America, to hide from whatever scourge or whatever may have been happening in Europe to save the holy bloodline and send them here. So that's what 23andMe is, according to Anita, and I think it's a fabulous theory, what they're looking for is to find out what happened to the holy bloodline of Jesus. So what they're looking for in specific, that's why they want to know if you're Jewish or not, so they can start eliminating people left mm -hmm. and right. So what they're going to be looking for is they're going to be looking for a bloodline that can lead you back to the ancestry of anyone in France, of which I am. We can, we can, we can trace back my family's ancestry to a couple of villages in France now. It doesn't mean anything. But I'm probably going to be looked at a little bit closer if that is indeed what they're looking for. And it's a really sexy theory. I, I love <laughs> this theory. It is it a good just one. oozes cool. Doesn't mean it's true, but it just oozes fascinating. What about us? Were you born in Wisconsin? Uh, no, I was in Illinois. Have you ever been to North or South Carolina? No, never been. Do you Illinois. like French dressing on your salad? I do. Okay, well, we got that <laughs> there going for us. So what they do? So what they can extrapolate from that is: so if you have blood going to France, and they can check that blood to find out if there's any. Middle Eastern descent uh -huh. in the same line as France because that means that if Jesus was a person and he was of Middle Eastern descent, that DNA is going to mix with DNA from Western Europe, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. uh, France, Germany, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And they can start narrowing down traits to find out if not only you're from France, but if there's a hint of Middle Eastern in there, that they can trace that back. And that's going to put you in a very narrow field of people that come from that region from that specific amount of time that may put you in the category for a holy bloodline. Ah, 
That for all we know, you'll be theory. coming back with good results. <laughs> I highly, I highly okay. doubt it. Oh, right. I highly no, doubt no, it. No, I, I, Their praise I, child. I, I am on the peak of a house, you know, of all the subjects we talk about on <laughs> yes. the show, and I try to keep it with an open mind. Go for this, it. to me, seems exactly like the people that they, they do the past life regression. Mm. You yeah. were a Middle Eastern princess back I in the fourth. I see Did anybody ever shovel shit? <laughs> Did somebody, it was just a, a, a you were dug a latrine back in somebody, the fourth century. Somebody dug the ditches, man. Not everyone was the king of their life. Now you're going back to Jesus, and it's like okay. I just, I just think it's a really interesting conspiracy. Never heard theory. of it before. No, I, I mean, didn't, I yeah. didn't hear that either. Yeah, but right. I mean, what else would a Christian company be looking for? And Money. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Because yes. you know the heavenly Money's father's the broke. He created yes. the whole universe, but he needs ten percent of my. And that's income. why we said it was contradictory, you know, yeah. last time because they had Neanderthals as a result, but. Yeah, yeah I, I don't doubt that this. there may be a god, but I doubt that there's a god who takes money in attendance. I mean, come on. But I thought that was a very interesting theory. Thank you, Anita. No, for it is a spectacular interesting theory, and I never heard it before. I, think I really did cool. not. Now, so the uh, the cost of this will it will it manifest so, itself in your and life? Have they found anybody yet? If you find out your Swahili tribesman, I don't know, disguised as a uh, Wisconsin I'm, cheesehead. I want to do a little bit more digging on the company specifically to find out exactly what they evolved from, or how they started, how they got into this. So more more to come. When I get the test results, and it takes a couple of weeks, when I get the results, I'm going to try to have a little bit more information on the company itself. Don't rob any banks. <laughs> you sneeze, they know. On, sneeze on the doorknob, they've got your DNA. <laughs> they know, dude. I mean, the You're already calling us tonight. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> Via your cell phones, the government knows everything <laughs> you're doing. Anyways, it's not like it's a mystery. He anymore. makes me laugh at home because he put tape over our webcam at home. But I'm like, if they can see it through a computer webcam, they can see it through your phone's webcam. They're probably they're watching you through your own TV and you don't even I know. Got, I mean, yeah. you don't even know. There's satellites above you and there's mirrors everywhere. They can. There's no angle. There's no way we can hide. And I think wasn't weren't we talking about it with Tammy one time? If you say like bomb too often, if you say like certain trigger words, mm. they'll be looking into. How'd you do with the comedy club, Toby? I bombed. <laughs> <laughs> Ring! <laughs> I killed! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't do anything. I have to be a forklift operator. Now. <laughs> yeah. it, it is amazing, really. I mean, you see, the, the, see you, it's so interesting to have you on the show, and I'm glad you're here. <laughs> to, no, seriously, to provide an input from uh, from your age group level. Yeah, uh, you, I agree. Because the millennials, you, you've been brainwashed already. You were before. After, yeah, that's how it is. You were kind of in the middle here, but I mean, I this stuff when I grew up about you know 1984, George Orwell. Did you ever read that book? Mm. Oh, no, but we were talking should, about this. Yeah, yeah. Really, that's that's got to be required reading. I read Big Brother school. watches perpetually, and this was what about Spark Notes? Is that <laughs> what? I mean, as long as you narrow down, yeah. So when was 84? When 1984 is an old book? Was, was, it was written in 1948. Yeah. They just juxtaposed them. Okay. <laughs> so in the 40s, it was predicted the future that we're living in now. I mean, almost to a, to the letter. It, it really was. I graduated in 1981, so that's how old I am. count back with, uh, you know, I know, oh, dang, oh, my God. But to make a long story longer, that's three years out. So we, we read it in, you know, probably 79, 80, right around mm-hmm. right that thing. Well, it's just four or five years away. And you didn't see it. But now, since that time, what has it been, 35 years, yeah. whatever, the, the, it's like the, the snowball is over the hill, and life is changing at such an alarming rate. Mm-hmm. Any 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 one of these that you buy, when you walk out of the store, it is outdated. Yep. And they have something probably in the you know like you saw Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Trek. Yeah. And, you know you saw those guys do that stuff. They're like, oh, that's just a, it's totally. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. We're living in the world of Star Trek. Yeah. Well, and George Orwell called it right too. We're we're a world of zombies. You go out in public, and I work at a grocery store. It's everyone, everyone's walking around. Oh, mm-hmm. that's, that's funny. On there, they can't go through an aisle without staring at a yeah. phone. George Orwell would describe that as a non-person. We're just beings here. We're worker drones. We're not yeah. even individuals anymore. So the, indivi- the individuality of humanity is out, and that book called it back in 1948. Well, it's funny. I have a roommate slash landlord who rents out a room, obviously, and it's 100 bucks a week. And he's 72 years old, and he, he, he's got one of these things, and he's got his bifocals, and he's trying to figure out, he's trying to talk in it, you know, the whole deal. <laughs> he's got a new phone. What? Exactly right. But he's doing it. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's Every generation yes. is hooked on their phones. It's yeah. not even just yeah. millennials. or I, Well, it's not just the millennials, yeah. What are we? I think we're 
Gen- what are we? No, you're millennials. Then no, there's millennials are You're pains in the ass is us. what you are. But no, <laughs> millennials are younger. Millennial is 2000 and That's Gen Z. Oh, is it? Gen yeah. Z is 2000 and beyond. We're the, like, 94 to the 99 is the weird... We it's Gen not y, millennials. It's like the no, 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 no. You guys like, are millennials. So I, they, just, they go up to 93. All right, but they just released the categorization of the years, and you guys fit... According to the government, as millennials, I mean, I'll find. You're probably I'll find on the stuff. you're on the edge of millennial Gen Zs. You're on the you're on the edge. But the, what what I, look at the seeds of pop culture that have been planted yeah. by the government, and we we talked about this a little briefly before that Close Encounters came out in the mid seventies, and that was supposed to be that to, to prepare my generation for the UFOs landing. You guys have a whole different thing. You, mm-hmm. You've got this. You've seen the technology. Yeah. Where do we get this technology? You know, people are crapping in the woods a thousand years ago. They're crapping in the woods a hundred years ago. You did this Sure, we was there a thousand years ago. Exactly. <laughs> you had about four of those cocktails, but that's okay. I thought it was the woods. Turns out it was my garage. You're I over 21. You can do that. Now, your generation is it. Now, your guys' kids, you can look at this. This is an antique. Yeah, mom and dad lift yeah. this mild tea on the thing. You can have a chip the in your of, head. The high end of the line, foam. Now it's just shit. Yeah. <laughs> For the well, record, Greg is correct. It was the mid 1980s to the mid 1990s are considered millennials. Dilly, dilly. There's I mean, a weird name for us, but I'll find it later. Okay. Humans. Wh- wackadoos. <laughs> Flapjacks. Well, my generation I would almost not consider. That would consider me, but it almost wouldn't consider you. Look it up. There's a name. I, I the, consider you, Carrie. Thank you. <laughs> Millennial is also known as Generation Y. Uh, there's another one. I can't think of it. Why didn't we spank <laughs> them like we should have? Um, we gave them all the participation trophy in Little League. You're a f- fat kid who can't get the ball and go over your head and you got a 7th place trophy and now when somebody t- yells at you at work <laughs> you cry place. and you have to go in a little safe zone and talk to the human resources director and this is my go. for the record this is my 7th place trophy there you go <laughs> right. that's it so sort of you're <laughs> it happens that way in the jungle yeah. too yeah. now don't touch that that animal with the thorn in his paw <laughs> just put a little real velvet rope and we're just going to let him be chomp <laughs> you're eating that's the first one you eat yeah and I don't know who, who it is it the Anunnaki that made us that way, but basically <laughs> we're pretty vicious bastards. I hate to say that. You're probably not too far uh, I'm sorry. Me. I mean, it's what, what is the jungle? What is the planet? It's a giant restaurant. It's mm-hmm. a cafeteria. You know, I mean, if we were in the jungle, sorry, intelligent or not, we're going to get eaten if we yeah. don't think of sleeping in a tree or something. Yeah, we yeah. don't think of creative ways. So. Yeah, exactly right. So on that happy That's note. That's true. So it's just amazing. Bon appetit. But we talked about that in Shot of Freud, what makes us, vicious, you know, like um, hostile beings in general. Sure. And that, that is in us. Adam's got just a brand new news coming in, but we can't see it. I can't. Adam's got a graph. He's it got just, graphs and charts. It's just bifurcus, a graph. It just says that, um, according to Harvard University, who categorizes each of the ages, millennials go from 1982 to 2004. Anybody 2004 or newer, including most of the Tide Pod eaters, are not considered millennials. They're considered a new generation, which is yet to be named. Tide Potters. Yes. We're going to name that, that generation it. right now. They're eating Tide Pods. They are. Generation I mean, my- <laughs> Wait, you haven't seen this? No. <laughs> okay, so my generation, we wanted to get high, couldn't get our hands on drugs. We'd lick toads. Toad lickers? Well, how, toad about lickers. Huffing, how about huffing uh, whipped cream? Huffing, remember that? Whippets? Yeah. Whippers? Whippers. Yeah. Whippers. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's like Ready Whip is the brand name. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Eat paint chips. <laughs> sniffing markers. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Somebody got uh, suspended for sniffing markers in middle school. <laughs> wow. Smelling too many smelling salts. That'll get you where you need to go. But then they got those smelly markers that are just so great. But it's I know, it's like, like blueberry and cherry and yeah. strawberry and orange. Those are nice. They are nice. I had Starburst. You had those uh, as a kid. Ones. You were a cool kid. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I thought they had good smelling glue too. I mean, yeah, erasers. Like, yeah. You think you think aliens come here to get high on something? <laughs> you know, so this is the best mushrooms. So Monday, <laughs> they get high on stupid when they come. To They're taking us. the yeah. most the most wackadoo dude who's had way too much to smoke, and they kidnap him, and they smoke the human. Like this guy's high on drugs, just light him on fire and whiff it in, boys. We're good. You ever seen a what is it? Scary movie two? Not they a have, long time. They have this guy who gets he's a stoner, always gets high, and he's got a great big afro and. One of the monsters takes him, wraps him up in a blanket, See? lights his ass on fire, smokes him like a joint. That's what the aliens are doing to us. Smoking <laughs> us like joints. Now, I wonder who's in charge now of the government dispensing this information. Because when I was a kid, the big deal, you know, Close Encounters, there's a couple other movies like that. Yeah. Now I think we've, but you, your whole generation, it's not new to you. 
You've seen it, you've heard it, yeah. you've seen Star Wars since you were a kid, Star Trek. You have the access to see everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's another thing too. And uh, I don't know if you know who uh, George Clinton, who the sh show was mm -hmm. named after this album called The Mothership Connection. George Clinton said, I, I don't have a cell phone because the governor wouldn't give us anything that cool without a catch. <laughs> he, he doesn't have a cell phone. He ain't lying. Yeah. It's a good album. Yeah, yeah. But there, yeah, there's, good album. Yes. there is a catch. There's a catch to everything. Mm -hmm. Just when you think there is. So, so now you, who always said you wouldn't go on, on record, now you're on record. Yeah, now I'm on record. So what I did is 23andMe gives you a lot of consent forms. <clears throat> it was four different consent forms. Uh, and you don't have to agree to any of these, by the way, mm -hmm. but you have to at least agree to the consent to test your DNA. But there's a consent to uh, if you have a, an earth-shattering disease like leukemia or whatever to be notified. So there's the disease mm -hmm. notification, okay. and there's the testing notification, and then there is can we keep your DNA for all times notification. I clicked yes to mm -hmm. everything. I, I went I went all in. All my chips are in. And I would never, I vowed never, yeah. and I mean ever, to do this. And I went ahead and did anyways for the purpose of entertainment. Carrie, how much would it have been next time? You would have had a little Jewish thing with a little... <laughs> right. <laughs> Orthodox. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Very prim and proper. L'chaim. <laughs> yeah, L'chaim. Exactly. Yeah. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Yeah. 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 Mazel tov. Again, I know it was like the first couple episodes that I vowed never, ever, ever, ever yeah. to do this. And here I am. Uh, thanks, Dad. I get this, uh, for forcing the decision. But in a way, I think this is going to be good entertainment value for what we're it's doing. Be fantastic. I'm excited yeah. for the results. Absolutely. Yeah. I just don't think that any of us can get away from it, especially your generation. Mm -hmm. Everything is on. Are you, are you printed? Did you, uh, did you get a job? Did you have to get bonded and fingerprinted? Uh, no. You did that, have you? Ooh, ooh, I got fingerprinted you. one time when I had to rent a U-Haul uh -huh. way, way, way back in like 1999, 2000. A friend of mine was moving, and to help her, we had to rent a U-Haul. Mm -hmm. In order to rent the U-Haul, I had to be fingerprinted. So someone's got my prints on file. Other than that, never been fingerprinted, but it's all on. You can use fingerprints on the phone. Everything's now. on here. Mm -hmm. So whether you're whether or not you've been fingerprinted by the police or sheriffs or state troopers or U-Haul, they got it on your phone. Well, they got one. I, I just have a thumbprint. Do you have I any? got a thumbprint. Yeah. yeah. So when somebody cuts your thumb off to try. To <laughs> you can also. I think I saw a video somewhere where we used to have a hedgehog. Um, but you can put the hedgehog's paw on the fingerprint thing, and it'll work if you set it up to be that way. Next, they're going to have retina scan for your eyes. <laughs> well, face then, detection, too. Facial recognition. So if I want in Adam's phone, sorry, Adam, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. I'm going to cut your face off oh. and wear your face over my face Ed like e. a good horror movie. I like it. Yeah. So I can get into his phone and my phone. Wait, wait, wait. What? You could just Save. make it easier and just hold up a picture. Thank you, Adam. That's exactly what I was going to do. Come on, well, man. Facebook does that, too. so gruesome. You're taking all the fun out of this. I mean, <laughs> when I want to cut people's faces off. Like, what's the problem? It'll show up as, do you want to tag this person in this photo? Because yeah, we recognize their it's face. It's funny because yeah. Yeah. Uh, this Last Jedi giant cardboard poster is so big, it tries to do facial recognition on the yeah. pictures of the poster. It's so if I can get it to recognize Mark Hamill on, oh, on the okay. picture, what if I get into Mark Hamill's phone based off of his facial recognition <laughs> off this giant ass poster that I have? That's awesome. Did I nobody think. ever think of celebrities? Like if a celebrity drops their phone, how literally anybody could get into their phone at that point? I don't know. Hmm. We got to go to Hollywood, and I mean right now, and search for cell phones. <laughs> oh, I mean, let's get with it. My best friend who lives out in L.A., she got to see Mark Hamill, George Lucas, and Harrison Ford at the star. Uh, Mark Hamill oh, Mark Hamill just got a star on the Walk of she Fame. She got to yeah, see yeah. him. She yeah, was for Corvette Summer. Close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Harrison Ford got in for uh, American Graffiti, I think. <laughs> Blade Runner. <laughs> Blade Runner. Well, Blade Runner, he could, yeah. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good movie. Or the movie he did uh, with uh, uh, Anne Heche. It was, it was uh, some kind of romantic comedy. Oh, smelling Ellen. Yeah, man, it was a re it was a weird. Was Han Solo in Indiana Jones, and it takes a romantic comedy to give him a star. I'm just saying, is that it'd be funny if that's. These are jokes, Adam. 
It's called a jailbreak. That's right. Now. Easy. Yeah, yeah, what kind of old Cut his face off. <laughs> Cut his face off. <laughs> the face is off right now. <laughs> Got the tools. But this is not even a hockey game. No. Nope. The face we, off in the corner. We do it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> now the FBI will Now we've got some new viewers. <laughs> exactly. He's that guy without a face. The real Ed Gein on the Mother <laughs> Ship Connection. Greg Gein. Greg Gein. Yeah. <laughs> can dig it. Right. can dig it. Are that happy though? Anything going on in your world? Um. Anything cosmic? No. Oh, Adam is raising his hand. Yes, Adam. Five minutes. Oh, okay. Five minutes. Okay. <laughs> yes, <Okay>, Adam. <laughs> well, so we don't have to write to How can people get a hold of us? Again, you want to yeah. send us a book? Yeah. We'll buy Let's it from you. The... Don't be it. We'll pay postage, whatever it is. We want to just Because these things are fascinating. Think we've seen it all. And I start reading them, and I think that three hours later, the I've, sun's coming up. I've yeah. got the Time Life collection of oddity books, too, upstairs. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, I've got all those wacky new books. Yeah, so if you want to send them in, just give them, you know, give us a message on our Facebook pages, and then we'll, you know, figure something out to get it to us. So mm-hmm. we'll Absolutely. do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've got nothing. <laughs> we can cut it short, though. But then I'll edit it out, so we're yeah. Because now tune in for the next episode because we're going to have a bit of an anniversary. Yeah, we anniversary are one year today. on the air, which is pretty cool. Yep. So this episode, so in one in one year, this is episode twenty nine. Wow. So we did like a lot of like a lot of TV uh, TV sitcoms and shows. It's like a whole season. For our season of shows, they run about anywhere from twenty eight to thirty five epi- episodes per season. So we hit. 29 episodes in our first season. Well, considering that all of us have really busy schedules yeah. and different That's schedules. That's pretty awesome. I'm on cruise ships all over the place. You yeah. guys are working days yeah. and nights. You had surgeries, all those yeah. kind of things. So we actually did pretty well. I think hopefully, so. now, now that we've got this brand new studio in here, this is absolutely fantastic. It looks great. Yeah. We will, uh, we'll bring in more of the guests that we had from the old radio show, too. And you didn't see half of those. A lot of those I can't wait to meet them. Unbelievably fa- uh, fantastic. Anita is getting our show more popular, too. I looked because the video good. that we put on her page, yeah. um, 1,500 views beyond wow. it. Still nice. rising, so wow. that's Absolutely. where we're getting to. Yeah. Well, we'll get more. I've got uh, some news that I, I can't share the details of, but there is a state station, radio station in Milwaukee uh-huh. that may be able to have us on uh-huh. on a Sunday night again. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Don't get all excited on it, but if we can do it, it will be great. Two hours instead of four hours, okay. we will jam pack it like we jam pack four hours. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely true. That'd be great. All right, the mothership will fly again. She is Carrie Turner. I'm Lelio Falcon. This is Greg DeGuire, the super geek, and I mean that with the utmost respect. I am the king of Uranus. We're hovering above your house. We know where you live. So just join us. Tune in again with Mothership Flies. It's coming soon to a computer.